Hello and welcome once again to the video. Uh, in this one, I thought I would take a little look at uh, the first three episodes of uh, the new Star Wars live action series, The Acolyte. Um, in fact, I just watched the third episode uh, just before doing this video. So that's very fresh in my mind. There are a lot of these live action series, of course, at the moment coming out. Um, I think like many uh, Star Wars fans, I'm pleased that there's so much Star Wars to consume, but at the same time, slightly worried that um, it might all get watered down a little bit. Uh, too much of a good thing. I mean, I could never eat a whole cheesecake, for instance. I'd love to be given a massive cheesecake to eat all on my own. But um, halfway through, uh, or maybe 65% uh, of the way through, I would start to uh, regret uh, having the cake. So I hope that doesn't happen with Star Wars. And um, so far it hasn't. But there there have been some hits and there have been some misses so far with the live action series. I have enjoyed parts, most parts of all the series. Um, there have only been a few bits from the series, different series that I didn't much like. But um, overall, um, I like them. I like them all and I will keep watching them. Um, and all wasn't very Star Warsy. Uh, it was sci-fi, but it wasn't. It didn't feel Star Warsy uh, really at all. Um, uh, there's hardly any aliens in it. Uh, there's a little bit of Tie Fighter action when they attacked that base, but um, I still liked it. I still really liked Andor, and I'm looking forward to the second series, even though it's not very Star Warsy. So I can overlook these little uh, things. Um, so, The Acolyte. Now, this was billed, um, before the series came out, this was billed as being, uh, as looking, uh, as being from the perspective of the Sith. It was a very generalised uh, sort of headline comment, but it was described as being a series looking from the perspective of the Sith. Well, after three episodes, it most definitely doesn't because there are, uh, apart from one guy uh, standing on a cliff edge looking at the sea, uh, we've not had any Sith action. There clearly is Sith there behind the scenes, but we've not seen any of it after three episodes. Um, it was also suggested that uh, the Jedi would look bad uh, well, certainly from the first two episodes, they didn't. However, in the third episode, um, they don't look bad so much as a bit interfering and clumsy. But not bad, but um, definitely interfering, basically. Um, it was quite interesting to see... Uh, Carrie Ann Moss from The Matrix in there playing Indara. Now, even though she was called, killed off in the first uh, few minutes of episode one, it was obvious that she was going to be in it for more uh, than just that one scene because she's on the main uh, sort of uh, thumbnail poster thing. If you go on Netflix, uh, Disney, uh, she's one of the three or four characters on the, on the uh, thumbnail that you click on to watch it. Uh, so clearly that means that she's going to be in it uh, quite a bit. Um, now we did have this flashback episode in episode three, but um, she wasn't in that all that much, I have to say. Um, but um, that might change. Uh, 
uh, we've also got another notable actor taking part is uh well I don't, i'm not sure you can call him an actor really but uh, anyway uh, how do you spell his name junus suatamo is playing kelnaka the wookie jedi now jonas suatamo or junus jonas or junus suatamo i think he's finnish uh and he played uh he uh, played chewbacca in the sequel trilogy for some of the scenes i think the walking up and uh, walking around and running around scenes uh, but at the time of the sequel trilogy uh, what's his face the original actor his, his name has escaped my mind temporarily he was still alive and he so he still did a lot of the he's dead now but he did a lot of the sitting down scenes of Chewbacca but uh, we do have the sequel trilogy Chewbacca actor back for this which is good um we also have the Squid Games actor. Uh, now, how do you pronounce his name? Lee Jung, Lee Jung Jae, or Lee Jung Jai, or Lee Jung Yai. I'm not entirely certain. Ling Ju Jai, uh, Lee Jung Jai, I think. Could be wrong though. But he was really good in Squid Games, the main protagonist in Squid Games, and he plays Sol in this. Uh, which is very good. Uh, the title music, I always listen out for the title music when these new series come along. Uh, it might grow on me. At the moment it's a bit flat and certainly not Star Wars-y, but then again, I certainly didn't think the Mandalorian theme was Star Wars-y. Uh, now I love the Mandalorian. It's still not Star Wars-y though, but I, I love the Mandalorian theme tune and Book of Boba as well. This is not the same uh, composer, I don't think, uh, for this one. Um, but it might grow on me. The incidental music is really good. I love the incidental music throughout uh, the programmes, throughout the episodes. But I'm not sure on the title music. Um, it shows the Jedi as uh, being politically powerful uh one of the jedi the sort of um the, the chief executive jedi uh what's that chief executive's name Vanessa Vanestra Rowe the, the the green jedi who seems to be the boss she talks about her political enemies or the jedi's political enemies and things like that which is not really what you want to hear we had a lot of that in the prequels um I don't like it when the Jedi are involved in politics and also uh, in the prequel. I loved the prequels, but um, they were often portrayed, well, they were portrayed as uh, generals in the Republic army, completely duped by um, Darth Sidious, of course, uh, totally wrapped around his finger, they were. But they were generals. In the Republic Army, generals. I mean, aren't the Jedi supposed to be incredibly peaceful unless forced to defend themselves or to defend others? It just seems strange that the Jedi, who I grew up thinking that they were almost like pacifists, um, that they could actually be General Kenobi and General Skywalker, General Yoda. Uh, it's just ridiculous, I think. But then again, everyone in, in those films was general. I mean, we had general solo didn't we to be a general leia i think <laughs> princess leia was a general wasn't she in the return of the jedi everyone was a general anyway so the politics in this one in the acolyte there's there is some of that going on but it's only a little bit in the first episode from what we've seen so far um the story seems very very simple we've had the flashback episode now episode three that shows why may uh, wanted to get revenge on those jedi even though it was may that killed everybody um may blames the jedi for making her kill everybody so she's a bit mad in other words um but it's i don't know i mean 
I think by now, by episode three, you should we should be able to see more of if there's a big baddie, big Sith baddie behind a lot of this. We we need to see them. Um, not just in the distance. Uh, and what's what's that Sith? What's that Sith Lord's? If indeed that was a Sith Lord, what is their motivation? What? Why are they helping May to kill a few Jedi just in order to kill a few Jedi? Is that all? Because she only wants to kill four. So, at the moment, the story seems very simple. Um, and a bit weak, I have to say. I'm I'm enjoying all the acting. I think all the acting's good. Nothing wrong with the acting. And I'm enjoying watching it, you know, but there are always going to be criticisms. And I do think the story is a bit simple and weak so far. I have to say so far. Um, I also think it's a bit bonkers how Tobin, um, out of guilt, uh, went and took part in the... Uh, it did 10 years of meditation, basically. It, has, it does have a name, that meditation, but I forget what it is now. Um, the name of it is not mentioned in the programme, but it's uh, it's mentioned elsewhere in the Star Wars canon. But, um, yeah, Tobin, the idea of Tobin going into meditation for 10 years, because out of guilt, he's trying to clear his mind of of guilt and punish himself and all that sort of stuff. That's a bit over the top when it wasn't their fault. Yes, they were interfering, the Jedi interfered, but they're, they're not proving to be bad, which is what a lot of the advertising before the series was making out. There's, but there's no way the Jedi would be bad anyway. How could you make the Jedi evil? Uh, that's crazy. So it was a very simplistic uh, tagline before the series came out in the build-up, saying, oh yeah, the, the, the Sith are good and the Jedi are bad. It was a little bit like that. Um, Yord, that Jedi Yord is a bit strange. I don't understand that character because he has his own Padawan, right? Which means that he is supposed to be a mature knight. He's only just become a knight, I think, or or at least when he re-met Oshi, he said, I'm now a knight. I suppose it doesn't mean he was made a knight that afternoon. But he has a uh, Padawan, and yet at the same time he seems to be rash. Um, a little bit like um, Obi-Wan Kenobi in The Phantom Menace. You know, be mindful of the living force, young Obi-Wan. Um, we have much to learn of the living force. That's what he says to him, doesn't he? Qui-Gon Jinn. Um, this Yord seems very similar to the young Obi-Wan Kenobi in Phantom Menace. But at that stage, that was fine, because Obi-Wan Kenobi was was a Padawan. This guy, Yord, is a knight with his own Padawan, so he shouldn't be making rash decisions. And even getting um, his idea of how to approach May uh, in the second episode, uh, he gets his idea overruled by Sol's apprentice. <laughs> Sol's young apprentice comes up with an idea um, way better than Yord's. And it's a bit of a comedy moment where Yord comes up with this convoluted plan of how to uh, interrogate uh, May uh, and capture her, put a bag over her head. Uh, you know, then we'll drag her off somewhere and interrogate her, which doesn't sound very Jedi-like. And then Sol's apprentice just goes, oh, we could just send Oshi in to talk to her. Talk to her. And I don't know, it's just that Yord, he comes across like a, a wet behind the ears, very inexperienced Padawan. But he's actually a knight with his own Padawan. So I think they've messed up a little bit there with the uh, his character. Um, yeah, Sol, I like, as I said earlier, very good acting, I think, by the Squid Games guy. Lee Squid Games, we'll call him. Um, but yeah, he's good. I like I like all the acting. I just think the character of Yord doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, hopefully, the story will get better once uh, 
Sith has been re uh, revealed. What I want to see is I want to see a line of Sith fighting a line of um, Jedi. I don't mean a giant set piece battle because there are not that many Sith, but you, you, or you just want to see or Inquisitor types, you know, um, just want to see lightsaber jewels. Basically, I want to see lightsaber jewels. Um, and this story does seem to be focusing. I mean, its main focus is around joining the Jedi, isn't it? That's that's what has caused all this problem. The Jedi's interference um, and Oshi wanting to join the Jedi and May getting upset about that. It's all everything st stems from that. But we haven't seen much actual Jedi action at all. Certainly no lightsaber duels. We've seen force powers force power stuff um, but no lightsaber jewels and I'm you know I mean uh, I I'm quite basic in that regard I just want to see lightsaber jewels um, right so oh that's now I did a few little notes did I do a few little notes of the third episode what I liked about the third episode which I've literally just seen just now um, is it still in focus? Hopefully it is. Come on, that's it. Bit of a wobble there. Sorry about that. Okay, so yeah, specifically the third episode. Uh, what? Oh, I do like. Um, and I've already mentioned that. <laughs> I've already mentioned Suatomo as uh, Kalnaka. Uh, we see more of Kalnaka, of course, in episode three, but not much because no one can understand what he says. It's a bit odd, I think, having a uh, a Wookiee as a Jedi, seeing as they are basically aggressive. I mean, in that second episode at the end, when Kalnaka is introduced, he takes that gun and he snaps it in two. Well, that's that's showing emotion, isn't it? That's showing anger. A Jedi. We wouldn't normally see Jedi doing that to weapons. You wouldn't see Kenobi, even if he was capable of snapping a gun in half, he wouldn't do it, would he? Um, you know, it's 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 aggression uh, that the species, the Wookiee species, are aggressive, and that doesn't seem to tie in, I don't think, with um, being a Jedi. So. I know that this the uh, in canon, Star Wars in comics and books and that have have had. Uh, I think also in the uh, uh, in the animated series as well, there have been Jedi Wookies, the odd one, but I think it's just a gimmick. It's like what would be the most unusual Jedi to have? Oh yeah, Wookie. Oh, we'll do that then. But there's a reason why it would be unusual. Because they're too aggressive, so I'm not. I don't. I'm not sure. I'm happy with Kanaka being a being a Jedi. Um, but I do like Episode Three. I loved the uh, the the gray the gray area between good and bad. You know, the Jedi are trying to do the right thing, but at the same time, they're they're a Jedi raiding party, basically, aren't they? <laughs> they're bandits hang, hanging out in the woods. Uh, waiting to strike on this witch's coven. Um, these, are they dark force users? Um, the mother Anisea, the mother of May and Oshi, uh, she at one point comments, or, or is it her other half, her partner that comments on how they are seen as using dark powers. So it may well be that, you know, they're not dark. It's not, they don't come across as evil at all. It might be like um, how in mythology, witches are portrayed. Uh, some it could be good, some can be bad, but even the good ones are looked on a bit sort of suspiciously. Uh, but anyway, yeah, you've got this Jedi raiding party hanging out in the woods, you know, they're going to threaten our our heroes, this witch's coven. I mean, it's strange, but um, 
I sort of like that little slight twist on it a little bit. Um, and then what was strange was he didn't finish his sentence, but Sol says that it's against the law to, against Republic law, you know, paragraph three, section four B uh, of of the Jedi training rule book. You're not allowed to train a child in force powers. But who are the Jedi to tell anyone else in the galaxy uh, who can be trained and who can't be trained? Ah, oh dear. It's more and more as more and more of these series go by, the Jedi look less and less heroic, like I remember them being in the original trilogy. Uh, oh, you know. And they don't come across very well here. They don't come across as evil, but they're just interfering busybodies. Um, and then, of course, the, they want to train them. And if they train them, then they'll ask them, do you want to become a Jedi? Look, here's a bag. It, it reminds me of a little bit like someone approaching a child in the street and offering them a bag of sweets to get into a car. You know, oh, do you want to be a Jedi? Do you want to have a lightsaber like this one? We'll get into our spaceship and you'll never see your family again. It's a bit, um, a bit ruthless. Um, the kids are played by twins. You can tell they look slightly different. The faces are slightly different. However, the adult May and Oshi, you can tell it's the same actress. And I've looked it up. It is indeed the same actress. Um, but not the kids, you can tell that they're twins. I have looked that up as well, just to confirm. But yes, you can tell the two apart, basically. I think Oshi has a slightly wider nose, I think. It's mostly in the nose that I can tell them apart. Um, it's a bit strange how they all died so easily. How did the coven die so easily? The fire started, and instead of fighting the fire, instead, the 40 or 50 witches all decided to die uh, instead at the same time literally by the looks of it falling down where they were where they stood and they couldn't have had masonry fall on top of them because where's the masonry they showed about 20 of the dead sisters and they were just lying down like they were having a kip um, where was all the masonry that supposedly might have fallen on them or did they burn in a fire no they didn't look like they burned in a fire at all um, Mother Anasaya is just lying down there as well, although you don't see her body so uh, particularly clearly. But I thought that was a bit, that wasn't right, that wasn't very realistic, was it? How easily and quickly uh, they all died. Um, so that was, a, that was a bit strange. Anyway, uh, we've got uh, episode four coming up. Uh, I assume that's, that may well be the end of the flashbacks, so that might be the end of Carrie Ann Moss. Um, in this series, possibly. Um, it's it's good. Does it? Feel, it does feel Star Warsy. I would say it does feel Star Warsy. Um, but I just want there to be more Sith v Jedi action, which I I hope there will be uh, coming up. But they can't take too long. Often they 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 spend too many episodes faffing about and then they have to try and squeeze everything in the, into the last two episodes um and I, i'd like to see them go back to coruscant i'd like to see some a lot of coruscant action uh i remember that was something i particularly liked from the prequels uh attack of the clones uh so much life so much busyness going on on coruscant i love that whereas in a series like say ahsoka the world seemed to be empty, including the other world they went to in a, in a different uh, galaxy or whatever they were, wherever they went to in Ahsoka. Um, there hardly seemed to be anywhere, anybody around, anywhere. Um, it was very uh, unpopulated. The Ahsoka story was very unpopulated. So I'm hoping this one will so far it's okay and i'm hoping there'll be a lot of coruscant action to really make it feel like a proper populated galaxy okay so i think that's it for now i will do another video looking at episodes four five and six um and 
hopefully uh, my wishes for those episodes come about. But being a big hardcore Star Wars fan, I will enjoy it no matter what. Right, thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe, please do so. Or hit the like button or leave a comment. Um, or leave a tip under the on the, what's it, the thanks button underneath the video. But until next time, it's goodbye from me. Thank you very much.